Nothing is more quintessentially New York than the yellow taxi cab. What started as a small fleet of little red cars over a hundred years ago has turned into a bustling system of thousands of yellow cabs. Despite years of turmoil, the taxi has become an icon of this buzzing metropolis. But being a cab driver these days, it's tough. The combination of the COVID-19 pandemic, competitors like Uber and Lyft, and city scandal has left many cabbies hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. My name is Richard Chow. I'm driving for a cab 16 years. The, the people start to trust the yellow cab. We are iconic. Yellow cabs are our landmark, you know. In 2006, Richard Chow purchased a permit to operate his own yellow cab in New York City. This permit, called a medallion, is a tin plate attached to the hood of a taxi. Medallions were once viewed as a valuable long-term investment. For medallion owner drivers like Richard, this piece of tin was akin to owning a house, and it cost about as much. I paid $410,000. Richard was able to set his own hours and was no longer beholden to leasing out a medallion-clad taxi from a fleet. By 2014, the value of a medallion inflated to over a million dollars. Drivers could sell their medallion for more than they paid for it and retire comfortably. There was a time when the idea of a medallion losing its value was beyond belief. Its value steadily rose every year, and with a fixed number of them available, about 13,000, it was easy to sell if a driver couldn't make the loan payments. But this was before ride-sharing apps and before the medallion market crashed. Today, a medallion is worth less than $100,000, leaving many owner-drivers, the majority of them immigrants, in the lurch. Before we make money, we make an American dream. Now medallion prices have crashed. We, we lost everything. We have 6,000 medallion owners, uh, frustrated, devastated. We lost investment, retirement. We lost everything. According to a Pulitzer Prize-winning investigation by the New York Times, it was all due to a predatory lending scheme that often targeted immigrants who didn't know what they were signing up for. Much like the 2008 housing crisis, medallion owners were left with astounding amounts of debt. Nine of them have died by suicide in the last several years. Richard Chow's brother was one of them. My brother's name is Kenny Chow. He saw me, I bought a medallion, I make the American dream, and he saved the money, he bought a medallion, $700,000. My brother unable to pay back the bank, the mortgage. Fellow driver Augustine Tang also knew Kenny. He had more hope than I did. He was saying the city has to do something right. But again, a year passed by, two years passed by, and couldn't survive, and right. it was a lot to take. 2018, he committed suicide near Gracie Mansion, the East River. It's hard. These guys deserve better. It's stories like this that brought many drivers out to City Hall to protest the debt. It's a fight that gained more urgency in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. While before, there were about 10,500 taxis on the streets, that number was reduced to about 3,500 over a year into the pandemic.
We're gonna be cool down first, and we're gonna be end up right in there. Follow me, please. Line up. No more suicide. No more bankruptcy. No more suicide. We are asking for your mercy. We are asking for your help, and we want you to listen. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the city's one of the central culprits behind the collapse of the medallion market. The city engaged in deceptive advertising and speculative auctions and turned a blind eye to predatory loans. And the city has a moral responsibility to make these drivers whole. In October 2021, the city approved a $65 million grant program to restructure debt. But the driver's union fought back, saying this would help lenders more than it would help drivers. In response to the city's plan, the New York Taxi Workers Alliance staged a rally and protest outside City Hall. The protest went on for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I sleep in the overnight in, the, in my car. For 12 days, many of us have not had any food because we have wanted and needed to shop the consciousness of New York City as well as the financial institutions that hold these loans. Pretty fatigued overall. Uh, I signed up for two days. I didn't think I could make it to day eight, but here we are. Richard, who lost his brother, continued the fight for a better future for himself and the rest of his fellow medallion owners. I'm, I'm fighting for the hunger strike for 10 days today. We are stay hopeful. We are keep going fighting for justice and fairness. After years of tension, Nearly 50 days of nonstop protesting and a hunger strike, a deal was finally struck on November 3, 2021. Many drivers will get millions more dollars of debt relief. We have seen drivers who are here with us today who are being asked to pay more than $3,800 a month. And now that driver will pay $1,122. Brothers and sisters of the New York Taxi Workers Alliance, we did it! Yeah! Together, we did this. You can pay your mortgage, you can feed your children, but it wouldn't have happened without you. What you did, once again, because you were strong, you were organized, you were righteous, your voices were heard. just so happy to be out of it and knowing when we chant no more suicides no more bankruptcies we really mean it and it, it it's there's no more you know and i'm very happy about that fight's not over. There's still so many things that needs to be changed uh, within the industry. I mean, for many of us, we know we have to build this union, build on this momentum. You cannot change anything. Like uh, Empire State Building, the yellow curve, also this is our landmark. 